Shorty go. Free Fat Mark. Let Shorty go. Free Fat Mark. Let Shorty go. Free Fat Mark. Let Shorty go. Free Fat Mark. Hello America, this is Jake No Fake News Jones here from CNN, the Cowboy News Network. We're reporting live from Washington, D.C., just inside the courthouse, which can only be described as the trial of the century. It's Bad Mark versus the United States government. Charges include kidnapping, theft of government property, and taking candy from a baby. Hmm. We have with us today Mr. Everett, the former U.S. Attorney General. Mr. Everett, Bob Bad Bart has decided to represent himself today, as well as Shorty in this case. Do you think that's a wise idea? For most people, I would strongly recommend obtaining legal representation. But Bad Bart is not like most people. He just might hold the upper hand in this legal battle. My only concern is for Shorty. With his limited IQ, I'm not sure he fully understands what's going on. But he has decided to let Bad Bart represent him also. Well, there you have it. Looks like there's a crowd forming inside, so let's get to getting. We'll be right back with a couple words from our sponsor. Have you or a loved one been injured in a horse and buggy accident? If so, remember to contact Sue Moore and Bill Moore, attorneys at law. Remember, don't get sore. Get more. You deserve it. Thank you and good day. Everyone please rise. Fifth District Court of the United States is now in session. The Honorable Judge Mortimer presiding. Thank you, Bailiff. You may be seated. Order of the court. Bad Bart, Shorty, please stand. Mr. Bart and Shorty, you have been charged with the following crimes. Theft of U.S. government property, kidnapping, and taking candy from a baby. How do you plead? Not, Not guilty, guilty, Your Honor. I see here you're representing yourself. Yes, Your Honor. All right, very well. Well, we were unable to seat an impartial jury. Therefore, this will be a bench trial, meaning I will decide the verdict. Bed bark, Shorty, do you agree to this? Yes, Your Honor. All right, very well. Please be seated. We will get started. Uh, Mr. Prosecutor, are you ready with your opening statement? Yes, Your Honor. I am. Mr. Everett, what do you think of those opening arguments? Well, it's no surprise Bad Bart has denied everything. What was surprising is he claims the baby gave him the candy of his own free will. Thank you, Mr. Everett. Let's go back inside now. Looks like the first witness is about ready to take the stand. Ms. Scarlett, do you swear to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth, so help you God? I do. You may be seated. Prosecution, you may proceed with your questioning. Ms. Scarlett, please tell the court exactly what happened on your mission to Deadwood, South Dakota. Miss Annie and Agent Smith and I took the train to Cheyenne, Wyoming. That's where we caught the Wells Fargo stagecoach to Deadwood, South Dakota. What a miserable trip that was. The stagecoach was hot, it was dusty, it was miserable, it was smelly, and they wouldn't stop, and it seemed like it took forever to get to Deadwood. Well, finally, when we arrived in Deadwood, we had all of our luggage, and Miss Annie and I found some nice gentlemen to unpack our things from the stagecoach and take it to our hotel room, which was beautiful. The decoration in the room was stunning. The the bed was comfortable, the linens and the curtains all matched, it was like it was made for me. Anyway, the whole purpose of our trip to South Dakota was so that I could enter the long range shooting competition and win the golden gun from Bad Bart and prove that he was a thief and a baby candy stealer. You're taking candy from a baby. So I entered this long range shooting contest and I won the golden gun. That's when Bad Bart got upset and tried to run off with the money and the gun and me. And Agent Smith saved the day and me by shooting the explosives that they had wired on the bridge and blew it up so that they couldn't get across the bridge with the money, the golden gun, and me. So that's exactly how it happened. And Bad Bart even tried to get me to eat baby candy. No, 
No, no further questions, Your Honor. Would the defense like to cross-examine the witness? Miss Scott, what exactly was your job role as a Secret Service member? I'm a field agent in training. And how long have you held that position? Approximately one month. Now, when you were in Deadwood, what was your job title then? I was Director Bell's personal assistant. Hmm. Now, as a personal assistant, did you have the authority to arrest anyone? Well, I guess, no. Mrs. Scarlett, we're in a court of law and guesses don't count. Did you or did you not have that authority to arrest? No. So, when you burst into my office, pulled a gun on me, impersonating yourself as a field service agent, you did not have the authority to arrest me. Is that correct? Well, yeah, yes, no, well, hold on a minute. I contend the only crimes committed were by Miss Scarlett. Impersonating a Secret Service agent, false arrest, and threatening me with a gun. Objection, Your Honor. Miss Scarlett is not on trial here. Overruled. Bad part to be continued. Now, why exactly were you in Deadwood to arrest me? Because you were going to run off with the money and the golden gun. That's a misunderstanding. I was in my office waiting for you to present you with the golden gun that you won at the contest. Is that correct? But you were putting the money in a bag. And Miss Scarlett, whose money was it? <sighs> Yours, I guess. Guesses don't count, Miss Scarlett. Whose money was it? It was yours, okay? It was yours. So you wanted to arrest me for creating a sanctioned event, shooting event by the GSPN using my own money. Well, you needed to be arrested for something. It's a court of law. I don't think that theory is going to fly. Kidnapping. Sure, you can't deny that. Shorty pulled a gun on me. Now, Shorty was just trying to protect me. Anybody walking into that situation would have done the same thing. Now, tell me, what were the exact words used on the stage that day? You said that you were not going to harm a hair on my pretty little head and that you had a business proposal for me. That doesn't quite sound like a kidnapping, Miss Scarlett. Scarlett may step down. Now, I've heard enough. I order the prosecution to drop all charges of theft of U.S. property and kidnapping. What in tarnation just happened in there? Looks like the government's case has stalled out faster than a three-wheel stagecoach. I told you Bad Bart was slick. The next witness is Director Bell. Bad Bart won't be able to badger him like he did Miss Scarlett. Let's head on back inside as Director Bell is about ready to take the stand. Director Bell, do you solemnly swear to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth, so help you God? I do. Director Bell, how long have you been the Director of the Secret Service? I've been Director of the Secret Service for the past three years. In that period of time, I've never quite seen the criminal personality that is Bad Bart. He's a no good, low down, cow tipping, cat kicking, sociopathic criminal. It's very, very necessary for justice to deal with this person. Thank you, Director Bell. No further questions, Your Honor. Does the defense wish to cross examine? Yes, Your Honor. Proceed, Mr. Bart. Director Bell, do you have any evidence that it was I that stole the golden gun? Well, no. Not actually. So, why did you send Agent Smith, Miss Scarlett, and Miss Annie to Deadwood to try to entrap me? 
because based on your profile, you are the only one who is crooked enough as well as bold enough to create a crime of this magnitude. Based on my profile, you decided to set in motion an illegal attempt to entrap me. Is that correct? No one tried to entrap you. We knew you would incriminate yourself. We just helped the process along. Did you hear that? He admitted to trying to entrap me. Objection. Director Bell is not on trial here. Objection. I've heard enough. Now, I order that all the remaining charges against Shorty and Bad Park be dropped from the case, except for the thing about the stealing candy from a baby. Now, uh, we will reconvene in one hour, at which time uh, we will hear the charges of stealing candy from a baby. Holy horseshine, who saw that coming? Bad Bart is making mincemeat of the prosecution. Your thoughts, Mr. Everett? It seems that in their haste to recover the golden gun, the Secret Service let all legal precedent fly out the window. What do you think the prosecution's next step should be? Oh, there is no next step. The only charge against Bad Bart left is that of taking candy from a baby. And I'm not even sure there's a law against that. Thank you, Mr. Everett. Ladies and gentlemen, the only remaining charge is taking candy from a baby. Now, Mr. Park, do you have anything to say for yourself? Yes, Your Honor. I fully admit taking candy from babies, but my motivation was honorable. With today's epidemic of childhood obesity and cavities, I'm on a crusade to protect children from parents that are neglecting their children, pacifying them with candy instead of spending time with them. So if I'm wrong, I don't want to be right, and I'm willing to pay the consequences for my actions. Very well, Mr. Bart. I convict you of taking candy from a baby. Shorty, since all the charges against you have been dropped, and you never took candy from a baby, you may go free. <laughs> Mr. Bart, you have been convicted of taking candy from a baby. However, there is no law in the books against taking candy from a baby. So, therefore, you're free to go also. Court is dismissed. Shut up, Shorty! I sure am glad they didn't have you testify. Sorry, boss. Could I speak to you privately? Surely, what is it? I have a very important message from the President of the United States. And don't call me Shirley. The President would like to see you immediately. It's a matter of great importance. Absolutely. Lead the way. Shorty, go make our accommodations at the Capitol Hotel. I'll meet you there later. Well, yee-haw! Bad Bart's a free man. If you've got any baby candy, you better lock it up. Mr. Everett, thank you for your expert commentary. It has been my pleasure, Mr. Jones. Well, until next time, wait a minute, Director Bell and Bad Bart are leaving the courtroom together? Something doesn't smell right. I better follow them. Until next time, this is Jig No Fake News Jones, signing off. Mr. President, Mrs. First Lady, please allow me to introduce Bad Bart. Bad Bart, Mr. President, and Mrs. First Lady. So, this is the infamous Bad Bart that stole the golden gun. Well, but, but, Your Majesty, I, I mean, Mrs. First Lady, let, let me explain. I, I... Silence! Silence! Please, please, please. Mr. President, let me slap him one time just really hard. I promise I won't leave a mark. Now, Donna, you know you're not in charge of interrogation at the Secret Service anymore. And I so hate that. Now, Donna.
darling, calm down. We have more important matters to attend to. I'll get right to the point. Before there was the golden gun, there was the golden pistol. Darling, will you? No one even knows this pistol exists. It was given to me as a gift from Sam Colt Jr. many years ago when I was in the military. You might ask why I have kept the gun hidden all these years. That is because there's a great mystery that surrounds this gun and great danger. You see, when Sam Jr. presented this gun to me, he also showed me its twin. One was made for me, and one was made to be presented to General George Custer. He was on his way to make the presentation when the gun was stolen and he was murdered. After all these years, we still have no idea who committed the murder or the location of the other pistol. I have devised a plan to expose the killer and recover the pistol. As much as I hate to say so, Bad Bart, we need your help. I need you to organize and promote a fast draw contest. First prize, the Golden Pistol. Hey, gum, I knew it, I knew it. The president is a cahoots with Bad Bart. I better take a gander inside. There might be others involved. Hey, you, stop! You men go get that guy. I'm gonna get the president and take him to safety. Very well. Director Bell, please continue with the details of the plan. Good day, Mr. Bart. Yes, sir. Mad Bart, as embarrassing as it was for the president when you stole the golden gun, he's not above asking for your help. Now hold on, I was acquitted of all those charges. Yes, we all witnessed you making a mockery of our system of justice. Why, thank you, I think. Now, when Sam Colt's killer realizes there's a match to his pistol, he'll be drawn into Deadwood, either to win the competition or to steal the pistol. The match set together will be worth millions. Now, Bad Bart. We're dealing with a cold-blooded killer. This is a criminal in a league, I believe, above your own. This will be extremely dangerous and we cannot guarantee your safety. Can we count on your help? Of course. I just got one question. What's in it for me? I anticipated your question. One, we'll exonerate both you and all your men for any crimes you've committed in the past. Two, we'll enter your book, Crime Spree for Dummies, in the Library of Congress. And we'll make it require reading for all incoming congressmen. Three, we'll give you a lifetime supply of baby candy. Oh my, now we're talking. <laughs> now, when you arrive back in Deadwood, don't even plan on any funny business. I've assigned my very best agents to both keep an eye on you as well as deal with the killer should he show his face. They'll be contacting you when you arrive back. Director Bell, no need to worry. We're on the same team now. Besides, when all this is over, I'll have the opportunity to travel the world in style, promoting my newest book. It's time for a crime. <laughs> Available this summer. Now, I'll go to the hotel and pick up Shorty. We'll go to the candy store and then the train station. Director Bell, the golden pistol, please.
Very good. Attention! 210 for Chicago and all points west is leaving on track two in one hour. Please get your tickets now. All the other agents are on board. We've got a long ride ahead of us. Well, at least we don't have to take a stagecoach. The train goes all the way to Deadwood now. Thank goodness, that stagecoach was awful. Oh, and congratulations, Miss Annie, on your engagement to Kangaroo Jim. Well, thank you. Well, what about you two? <gasps> oh, oh, no! Oh, oh I'm so that's excited! Excited! All right, ladies, settle down. We've got a serious job ahead of us. Agent Owen. Sir, I have an urgent message from the First Lady. For thank you, Agent Owens. Well, it seems that the First Lady wants us on the presidential rail car immediately. Lead the way, Agent Owens. Hi, everyone. Welcome to the presidential rail car. I don't know if you've ever been in a presidential rail car before, but this is like our home away from home um, while we're traveling. And let me point out a few beautiful things about it. The windows up here are by Tiffany and the crystal chandelier was imported from France. The inlay wood that you see was um, came from Italy and the artisans that made this, they came and put it in on this car. It's fabulous. It's beautiful. Too many windows. <laughs> James, would you just go and ask the porter to bring us some hot tea, please? If you all will follow me to the observation deck. And this is the observation deck. If you'll please come in and have a seat. So, Madam First Lady, where are you and the President headed? Actually, the President is still at the White House, but I'm headed to Deadwood, South Dakota. What? Do you have any idea how dangerous it's going to be out there? Does the President know about this? Well, he thinks that I'm on my way to my mother's. What he doesn't know won't hurt him. Don't worry now, I can take care of myself. But I do have some more information about where the golden pistol has been seen. We have got to find this killer. Well, I don't like it, but I don't suppose there's anything I can do about it. Here's what we know, Madam First Lady. We know that there's going to be a fast draw contest held in Deadwood, South Dakota. We know that the Golden Pistol is first prize. Now what nobody knows is that I'm going to enter that fast draw contest disguised and undercover. I want to get as close to those suspects as I can get. When we get out there, we're going to have a meeting with Sheriff Law and his men and inform them of our plan because we're going to need all the help we can get. We're going to even deputize Bad Bart and Shorty. Bad Bart and Shorty? What? They were acquitted of those crimes. I cannot believe it. I'd love to slap him one more time. I'd love to slap him too. I'd like to slug him. I'll put a slug in him. <laughs> I almost slapped him at the train depot, but he ducked, darn it. Now, there's something else that's been bothering me and I've never told anyone. 10 years ago, my brother, a Texas Ranger, was murdered. And rumor has it, the man that did it used a long barrel gold pistol. No one was ever caught. I now realize that the same man who killed Sam Colt Jr. also killed my brother. Don't worry, Miss Scarlett, justice will prevail. Now you all get comfortable because we've got a long ride to Deadwood.
think I hear a rider coming. Yep, looks like Kate. Must be something mighty important. Her wrist coming all the way out here. You got to take a look at this, brother. Good job, sis. Get on back to town, round up the boys. Meet me in Deadwood in five days. What do I do if I run into trouble? Do what you always do. Kill them all, Kate. <laughs> That's one pretty revolver. Yes, she has a twin sister too. Looks like you and I are going to a family reunion. Merle, did you ever wonder how the Sitting Bulls Warriors defeated the 7th Cavalry? No, not really. 7th Cavalry. Springfield trap door, 4570, single shot. Slow to reload. Sitting Bulls Warriors, Winchester 66, Yellow Boy. Snake bites, yum. It sounds delicious. May I have the recipe? Why, sure. Come on in. It sure is good to be back home again, boss. You can say that again, Shorty. Sure. It sure is good to be back home again, boss. Sheriff Law! Good morning, sir. Good morning, gentlemen. I have just been authorized by the United States Secret Service to deputize you, Bad Bart, and your men. If you'll place your left hand on the Bible, raise your right hand. Raise your right hand. I do solemnly swear to uphold the laws of the great state of South Dakota and the United States of America. Uh, I, do. I do. I now pronounce you, man, oh, sorry, wrong ceremony. You are now deputized. Gentlemen, we are dealing with a cold-hearted killer. I don't want you to try to be a hero. If you have any suspicion whatsoever, you come to see me or the Secret Service. You can count on us, sir. Thank you, gentlemen, and good day. Good day, good day Sheriff. Sheriff. Shorty, it sure feels good to be on the right side of the law. Are you going to have to change your name now, boss? No, no, that's going too far, but we are going to have to consider another way to make a living. How's that, boss? Well, there's a couple of schools of thought on the topic. School? I've never been to school. Can we live on campus? Not that kind of school, Shorty. And do I get a diploma? Remember, Shorty, cash trumps a diploma any day. One school is we sweat and toil, toil and sweat, doing manual labor. Ooh. I'm not, I'm not going to like that school, boss. What we need to do is create an empire of marketable products. <laughs> what kind of products? Well, now that we're on the right side of the law, unfortunately, we're going to have to discontinue it's time for a crime. But I've come up with the great product of Bad Bart's Baby Candy. Now, slobber free. I think I'm gonna love this school bus. And this is only the beginning. <laughs> <laughs> Cowboy, 
Misty. Miss. Miss Tim, short for Miss Emerald. And you are? Gold Tooth, short for Gold Tooth. I'm here for the quick draw contest tomorrow. Is uh, Miss Pearl around? Miss Pearl told me this place a while back, said she was headed somewhere a little more civilized. Well, I can't blame her for that. I'm actually looking for somebody to help me with a favor. I was going to ask Miss Pearl, but she's not here. You think you could do that for me, Miss M? Any friend of Miss Pearl's is a friend of mine. I'd be happy to. I'm, I'm actually a U.S. Secret Service agent, and I've entered this contest undercover. We think there's some killers on the loose here, and I need somebody to help me kind of watch for anything suspicious. You think you can do that? Sure can, Mr. Tooth. I'm assuming that's not your real name. I'd be happy to. John Smith. And I appreciate it, Miss M. If you see anything suspicious, you let me or Sheriff Law know, and we'll take care of it. Sure thing, darling. You be safe. Appreciate it. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. I, I, me, me, I have done it again. I'm promoting a new shooting contest with another fabulous prize. Bringing in people from around the world competing in this fast draw competition for the grand prize, the Golden Pistol. <laughs> the Grand Marshal of the shooting contest is our very own Montana world-renowned gun expert and analyst for GSPN News. Well, thank you very much, ladies and gentlemen. Now, because of the number of women and children present, I have decided to declare this a non-lethal competition. Uh, now, 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 hold on, people. You can always challenge somebody to a little side competition afterwards. And best yet, our undertakers agreed to stay open extra late tonight. If you get my drift. Yeah. Yeah. Well, thank you, thank you, Bart. Well, as I said, this will be a non-lethal competition, which means the contestants will be shooting side by side at knockdown targets. Now, once the contestants are in place, they will be asked if they're ready. And upon confirmation, a signal is going to be given at which time they will draw and they will fire. Whose ever target goes down first will be the winner. Now we're going to draw names from a hat to determine the shooting order. There will be judges on the street to make sure no one fires early. They will also determine the winner and reset and repaint the targets. If there is any dispute, I will step in and be the final judge. You got it? Yeah. All right. Well, I want to take this opportunity to wish every one of the contestants good luck. Thank you, Mr. Montana. If you'll proceed to the end of the road, we'll get this competition started. Yeah. Welcome back to Deadwood, South Dakota. Thanks for listening in. I am Dusty of the GSBN, the Gun Sports Broadcasting Network. Joining me in the booth this morning is my friend and contest director and our gun expert, Montana. Montana, would you give the folks an overview of what we'll be witnessing here today? Well, sure thing, Dusty, and I sure appreciate you inviting me back. Uh, we had a great time last time, and I'm sure this is going to be a great contest as well. Folks, all the fastest gunfighters in the West have assembled for a fast draw competition, the likes of which has never been seen before and every single one of them have one thing in mind and that's the golden pistol Dusty. You heard that right folks the golden pistol it's Samuel Colts Jr's 24 karat gold masterpiece I'm told it's worth a fortune. <laughs> you know until recently we didn't even know that thing existed and I'm telling you it's chambered for 45 Colt but what makes it really unique and special is its 12 inch barrel and it's beautiful engraving. Wow that's great, Montana. Now let's join the action down in the street. Our folks, contestants, Toadless Tom and Diablo Dave. Yay! Yay! 
both of these gentlemen, and I use that term loosely, have a bad <laughs> reputation in Montana. Well, like all the other contestants, Dusty, they're using slicked up Colt peacemakers and the slightest touch could cause the gun to fire. <laughs> Maybe that's why they call him Tolis Tom. Let's get back to the action and see if either one of them can gain an advantage during the verbal face-off. <laughs> Let me guess. You shot your own toe off. What can I tell you? Accidents happen. <laughs> Is that the one that went wee, wee, wee all the way home? Now that ain't funny, Diablo. <laughs> <laughs> well, you get ready to whine, because I'm going to send the other piggies home, too. Well, I don't think that's going to happen. <laughs> Well, I'd say Diablo won the war of words on that one, but let's see who's the fastest now. All right. And the winner is Diablo Day! Well, Diablo will be advancing, and Tolis Tom limps on home. I guess we'll never know which toe he's missing. <laughs> Well, I think it's the one that had the roast beef, Dusty. <laughs> oh, and now a word from one of our sponsors. Are you like me? You're over 50 and your get up and go has got up and went? Then I would encourage you to try Dr. Smith's liver pills guaranteed to give you energy like never before. Side effects may include headaches, dizziness, diarrhea, constipation, weight gain, weight loss, vomiting, horrible hemorrhoids, hair loss, vision loss, hearing loss, the always popular pus pocket, delusions, contusions, protusions, illusions, boogers, blackheads, whiteheads. This will be the kid versus the man. Yay! The kid's young, but in a game of quick reflexes and good eyesight, that might be a big advantage. But the man's got experience on his side. Well, let's see what happens in our face-off. Does your mama know you've been playing with guns? She taught me anything I know, mister. Well, let's just see how well she taught you. I'm ready when you're ready. Ooh. Ooh. The kid is respectful, and I'm impressed, but let's see if his shooting is just as impressive. Folks, the kid just stuck it to the man. You could make him one of the favorites to win the golden pistol. Well, not only that, Dusty, he just made his mom real proud. Now, back to our action. Introducing Hair Trigger and Cold 45. <laughs> Both of these men are known for their expertise with a shooting iron. Well, both of these men make a living slicking up guns for other people. I actually have a 45 customized by Colt, and all I have to say is that gun is nice. Let's see who's the slickest in our face-off. Just because the trigger's fast don't mean the hands are fast. You just worry about yourself, Colt. Colt's right. It's more about the hand than the gun. Colt's our winner, folks. He's gonna be hard to beat, Dusty. Now let's see who's up next. Give it up for Blue Steel Lightning and Gold Tooth. Yay! We all know of Blue Steel's reputation, but I have never heard of or seen Gold Tooth before. Yeah, he's a real mystery, all right, Dusty. He certainly is, Montana. Let's see how he does in our face-off. Lightning strikes in the blink of an eye. Yeah, while you're blinking, I'll be shooting. <laughs> <laughs> we'll see. Shall uh, we? We shall. Goldtooth has a very quick wit about him. Well, let's just see if he's as quick with a gun or if he's just shooting off his mouth. Oh, that 
that was a close one. Montana, the judges are motioning for you. Yeah, I see that, Dusty. I need to go confer with the judges. Folks, while Montana is conferring with the judges, I'm going to ask Bad Bart to join me. Come on in, Mr. Bart. Well, hello, Dusty. How you doing today? How's the family? Y'all need to come out to the Bart estate real soon. Oh, thanks for joining me, Mr. Bart. Mr. Bart, recently you were completely exonerated from all charges related to the Golden Gun. How does it feel to be a free man again? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. It feels great. I had no doubt Shorty and myself would be absolved of all those bogus charges. So what's in your future now, Mr. Bart? Are there any other books coming out? Well, Dusty, we decided to take things in a whole new positive direction. So therefore, we are canceling the release of It's Time for a Crime. Mr. Bart, what sort of other products are you working on? Yes, sir. Uh, well, we now have Bad Bart's Baby Candy, now slobber free. Here, take some to the kids, will you? And we also have Bad Bart Posse Collection of Tinted Glasses. Here's your complimentary pair. What we're doing here, Dusty, is a bigger vision to create a whole empire of capitalism. <laughs> <laughs> Our judges have now reached the decision. I'll stand by that gold tooth for you. Folks, gold tooth is the winner. Yeah. <laughs> gold tooth is our winner. And now a word from one of our sponsors. <laughs> Night sweats, day sweats, hot sweats, cold sweats, coma, and death. That's enough to kill anybody. Are you like thousands of people that suffer from an embarrassing cow lick? Darn! Those pesty cows! I can't even get my hound! <sighs> if so, may I invite you to try Dr. Poindexter's pomade, guaranteed to put every hair in its place. Wow! Ain't that slick! Woo! Thank you, Dr. Poindexter. We're down to our final four, folks. In our first semifinal, it's going to be Diablo Dave versus the kid. Yeah, I sure am glad this is a non-lethal contest, Dusty. I sure would hate to see the kid get hurt. Me too, Montana. But his mom doesn't seem too concerned. Let's get to our face-off. Word of advice, kid. Not too late to change your career path. I'm just trying to make my mama proud, Mr. Diablo. Those were wise words from Diablo to that kid. Yeah, well, I'm not too sure his mama agrees, but let's see who's the fastest. Congratulations to Diablo Dave! <laughs> Diablo Dave is moving on to our final round. Now let's see who he's going to be facing, Dusty. We've got Gold Tooth and Colt 45. Yeah! Yeah! Whoever wins here is going to face Diablo in our finals. Yeah, this is where a man's nerves can really get the best of him, Dusty. Let's see who can keep his cool under pressure right now. They're about to face off. Hey there, Mr. Gold Tooth. I see you put your money where your mouth is. Huh. 24 carat all the way. Give me something to aim at. Hey, you wish. <laughs> Dusty, you can feel the tension rising. This is going to be a close one. Congratulations to Gold Tooth! Yeah. Yeah. Gold Tooth takes it, folks. He's going to be facing Diablo Dave in our final showdown. And let's get back to the action. This is the final match, folks. Down to Gold Tooth and Diablo Dave. Good luck, Yay! gentlemen. This is it, folks. It's Diablo Dave versus Gold Tooth for all the marbles. Yeah, Dusty, these men are pretty evenly matched. Let's see if anybody can gain the advantage in the face-off. That tooth looking pretty gnarly. You ever think about brushing that thing? Yeah, thanks for reminding me, Diablo. You know, my mama always say, brush your tooth every day. 
or your tooth's going to go away. <laughs> I wish your breath would go away. <laughs> One thing's for sure, you can't handle the tooth. Well, we'll see about that. Wow, what a face-off. Yeah, they both sort of held their own in that face-off, Dusty. Now let's go see who's going to be our champ. Diablo was blinded by that gold tooth, and now gold tooth is our winner. Yeah, Dusty, he's now got a golden pistol to match his gold tooth. You youngins remember, brush your tooth every day, or your tooth will go away. This is Dusty and Montana signing off for the GSBN. Join us next week when we'll be at a gun twirling competition in Dodge City. But until then, as always, set your sights on the important things in life and then just squeeze that trigger. Well, congratulations. Now what? You and Annie go to the saloon. These guys are going to make a move. They're going to do it right now. And your first priority is to go protect the first lady. Well, I don't like it. I'd rather be with you. I know, but you've got a job to do, Scott. Well, All right. Are you okay, brother? Yeah, I'm okay. Go tell the men, let's go to plan B, and then you meet me in front of Bad Bart's office. You got it, brother. Watch the door, shorty. I'll get the golden pistol. Well done, boss. I need help. Boss, there's a little old lady out here. She says she needs our help. Well, let her in, but be careful. By handing over the golden pistol. Come on in, Diablo. Diablo! I should have known. You were the one behind this. Ha ha ha. Pistol, please, Mr. Bart. This has been easier than taking candy from a baby. Now, wait a minute. That's my line. Not anymore. While you're at it, give us that baby candy. <laughs> what are you going to do? Cry? Maybe. <laughs> Shorty, hold me. Will do, boss. Your plan worked perfectly, boss. Everyone's locked up in a dance hall except a few ladies in the saloon. Good work, Merle. Okay, go get the horses. Meet me and the boys at the edge of town. Merle and I finish up here. You got it, brother. Pistol, please, Mr. Bart. What about the ladies in the saloon? All them ladies ain't no threat. Let's make our getaway. Diablo Dave. His men have locked everyone in the dance hall. I slipped out the back and no one saw me. Annie, come with me. They won't expect us to try to stop them. Miss M, you stay here and guard the first lady. No way am I staying here. I can handle a gun. I'm coming with you. She's right, Miss Scarlett. We don't know how many of them are there and I'm going to take Big Daddy. Who's Big Daddy? This is Big Daddy. He doesn't talk much, but when he does, people listen. All right, ladies, come on. But remember, if they don't surrender and shooting starts, shoot to kill. Carolyn, you watch the bar. Yes, ma'am. My, 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 what do we have here? Merle, take the golden gun, meet Kate. Rest you men, y'all stay here with me. It's all over, Diablo. You and your men drop your pistols and no one gets hurt. Now ladies, you know you're no match for me and my men. Put down your guns and give us the road. Can't do that, Diablo. Your days of stealing and killing are over and that ends right here, right now. 
It's just a pistol, Miss Scarlet. It isn't worth dying over. It's more than that, Diablo. Ten years ago, down in Abilene, you killed a Texas Ranger. That Ranger was my brother. This is personal. Well then, let's just make this between you and me. I can't ask my men to kill a woman, but I don't have any problem doing it. It's all right with me, Diablo. I'm gonna give you one more chance. Step away. Besides, doesn't the good book say, thou shalt not kill? The way I see it, Diablo, if I kill you, God's either gonna forgive me or thank me. But either way, you're a dead man. Have it your way. Whenever you're ready. My brother, enjoy your stay in hell. It sure is good to be on visit. It sure is, and I'm looking forward to becoming Mrs. Smith. Mr. and Mrs. Smith has a nice ring to it. Speaking of nice rings... Mr. Smith, Mr. Smith, telegram for Mr. Smith. Yes, that's me. Sure. Thank you. This is from the president. He says, the president sends his congratulations on a job very well done and also on your upcoming wedding. Stop. Unfortunately, though, I have an urgent assignment that will involve both of you. I guess we'll just have to postpone our wedding. He says, I need you to take the presidential yacht on a honeymoon cruise to Bermuda. And he wants to know if we think we can handle that. Yes, yes sir. We're, We're gonna, gonna love, love this job. job. living. You know, I thought it's going so good. Maybe it's time for me to settle down and have a family. Wow, boss. I never thought I'd hear you talk like that. But there aren't too many nice family 
type ladies in Deadwood, if you know what I mean. Well, I, I know what you mean, but uh, what, are, what do you think about one of these mail order brides? No, boss. Big Jim ordered one. She got here, didn't look anything like her picture, and she was even chewing tobacco. Ugh. I got it. What about your old crime school sweetheart, Amelia? She gets out of jail soon. Oh, that's right. She's been in jail for about the past five years. She'll be getting out any day now. We were so in love. I wonder if she still thinks of me. Amelia, is that you? Kate, where is everyone? I just got out of prison and I came by to see the old game. Well, Diablo's dead. Everybody else is behind bars. I'm the only one left. Diablo is dead, but how? He was gunned down in the streets by a Secret Service agent named Miss Scarlet. Well, what are you going to do about it? I swear on Diablo's grave, if it's the last thing I do, I'm going to hunt her down and I'm going to settle the score. Where are you headed? Well, I've been thinking about my old crime school sweetheart, Bad Bart. If I only knew where he was. I know where he is. He's in Deadwood, South Dakota. Mm. Well, I think I'm going to have to go pay that cat-kicking cow tip and double-cross her a visit. Good day, Kate. You take care, Amelia. Have safe travels. Good luck. See you down the trail.